This video is brought to you by the Curious Critters of Whimsy Isle Kickstarter. Have you ever wondered if there's a magical setting for your resin 3D printer that can take your prints from good to pretty much perfect? Well, there is a setting that can do that. It's called exposure time, and there are a whole bunch of tests you can use to find your perfect exposure time to get those sharp prints. The problem, there are just too many tests. I mean, look at this. There's the XP finder, these regal cones, this cute town, ground control to major, this tensegrity looking thing, and that's just a little taste. The good news is I've tried them all, so you don't have to, and I'm gonna explain the pros and cons of each and every one of them to you so you can save yourself time, know which ones you should use and get the sharpest prints you're capable of getting with whatever resin you wanna use. All of that coming up next. Hey there, I'm Danny, the 3D Printing DM, and welcome to 3D Printed Tabletop, a channel where we cover all things 3D printing for your tabletop games. Today's video focuses on what is absolutely the most important setting for resin 3D prints, exposure time. What it is, why it's so important, and how you can find that magical number for the resin you're using via the tests I'll be sharing with you all throughout this video. Now, before we dive in, we need to first talk about what exposure and exposure time is. The way most home resin 3D printers work is that the slicer software splits up the model into layers and the printer bed drops down to the screen, which is usually an LCD screen like the one on your phone. It lights up that layer, hardening that layer, and then the bed lifts, popping it off the screen. Then it does it all over again until you have a beautiful finished print. Now, the exposure time is how long the UV light stays on for hardening each layer. And when you hear the terms overexposed or underexposed, and that means the resin will be shrinking too little or expanding too much. And both of those things can lead to failed prints, blobby or flat out missing details, or maybe difficult to remove supports. And those are all terrible to deal with, which is why I'm making this video. Now, if you're wondering why can't we just find the perfect exposure and share it online, well, some people do. And Lychee Slicer has this new community-based profile feature. But a lot of the times, if you're using a new resin, you don't have those features and you don't have examples online of people using it because it's not very common. And every resin brand has its own optimal exposure time. And this exposure time can also be varied based on your printer. So it's complicated and you might still need to find your specific circumstances optimal exposure time. And then you're dealing with minis, which is even more complicated because they come pre-supported some pre-supports are thicker than others, so finding the perfect exposure time that works and doesn't fail is even harder. Not saying all this stuff to scare you, I just wanna stress the importance of having a good exposure time locked in so you can feel confident and comfortable with your prints. So now that we're on the same page in terms of what and why exposure time is so important, let's get to the exposure test, shall we? First, I'd like to tell you about today's sponsor, the Curious Critters of Whimsy Isle Kickstarter. The Curious Critters Kickstarter is a collaborative project of Velrock's awesome modeling and Jamushka's fantasy illustrations combined to bring you an STL bundle of 13 characters, four familiars, and three mystical trees. Each miniature has a unique theme in mind for D&D 5e content and is super charming and extra cute. This little bat rogue, the swindler, is my favorite personally. In addition to the core bundle, even more characters and content are planned for stretch goals, including an entire source book an adventure set on the island. If you'd like to test print one of the critters yourself, the fiery hot tempered dragonborn adventure Puck, you can visit the Kickstarter page right now and find the link where you can download Puck absolutely free. Visit the link down below in the description and pledge today to become the newest denizen of the wonderful Whimsy Isle. Thanks for sponsoring content creators Valrock and Jamushka. And now back to our exposure tests. We're gonna start with what I call the flat tests. These are tests that are obviously flat. In general, flat exposure tests are faster, very difficult to fail, easier for cleanup and removal, and they are famous for the billions of circles, lines, letters, and these bar things, which feel very crop circly to me and just as mysterious as the results you'll get. Let's start with what I consider to be the most popular exposure test, the original XP2 calibration matrix. If you've spent any amount of time on a resin 3D printing forum or Facebook group, you've probably seen this test before. It's the red delicious of exposure tests, very common and kind of bland in my opinion. Now this test strength is its ability to help you begin to visualize over and under exposure. The circles on the left show the blobbing that can occur and how details can get softened if exposure is incorrect. But that is also one of the weaknesses of this test. It's super subjective. 
Look at the difference between these tests and tell me which one you think is better. Keep in mind, we're looking at this with a microscopic lens that's zooming in and I still struggle to determine what is perfect or not. For those of you wondering, anti-aliasing is turned off. Can you see what I mean though about how the exact answer might be difficult to interpret? The part of this test I like best though is that center piece where the two triangular sections meet. If the tips of the triangles are touching almost perfectly, then your exposure is locked in. And in theory, dimensional accuracy of that box should be perfect too, but uh, dimensional accuracy is kind of another thing. Uh, has different requirements than say miniatures and terrain, but we'll talk more about that later. So since this is such a fast printing test and such a popular one, it's easy to share and ask for help interpreting the results. So it's used a lot as a result. And if you're interested in the XP2 test, there is an improved version of this test that I would recommend instead. And it's the Dennis Wang Thicker Validation Matrix. It's the same test, only with the thicker base. With the original matrix, you have to lower the amount of initial overexposed layers, which are often called burn-in layers, so that the results are accurate. But with the Dennis Wang version with increased thickness, it's big improvement because it removes the risk of those early burn-in layers messing up the test results. Now, Dennis Wang also has his own exposure test, which you might have seen Uncle Jesse using quite a bit. This test is much simpler. The thing to look for is that the small supports on the inside print and that it's nice and uniform. And I like using this as a bed level check, honestly, rather than an exposure test. The test printing is about the only thing I know from this, like I just said. <laughs> Maybe it's just because I don't understand the test very well, but there isn't as much to compare from what I can see, just that it prints well. So I don't really know if I'd be able to tell whether a 0.5 difference of exposure is really gonna make a difference. And it's a nice looking test, but I guess I don't get it. That's just me though. Next up, we have a similar alternative to the XP2. That is the Frozen XP Finder. As you can probably imagine, this was created by Frozen and is a similar square flat test. Much like the previous test, it's thicker than the Photonster XP2 and I like some of these visual references more. The corners, for example, that actually helped me see exposure differences easier. The best part for me of this test is that it has result instructions or interpretation guidelines, whatever you wanna call it. And I know for some people this stuff is self-explanatory, but I'm a normie. I don't get tech stuff without a lot of practice or help and it just doesn't come naturally to me. So any test that has instructions will automatically get a ton of bonus points for me. So 10 out of 10 frozen, well done. But this is not a perfect test. It's still difficult to read and determine which is best, just like the previous flat tests. For example, with this text, I can see there's middle ground, but I can't really be sure it's the right one just that it's the best of the examples I've printed. And while good, that isn't ideal to prevent failures from supports like I mentioned earlier. So while this test is better than the XP2, its best strength is still helping you get within a decent starting range in my opinion. After the frozen XP finder, we have the photocentric XY uh, full test. The good, one of the pluses of this test is that it works as a full bed exposure test or a lot of the bed depending on your bed size. I like this star and these two XY squares. They're very easy and simple to measure dimensional accuracy. This test also feels very Hollywood star to me. The text, the layout, everything just comes together beautifully. Thank you so much. Thank you. I love you. Unfortunately, to start off with the bad, this test also works as a full bed exposure test. Let me save you 50 milliliters of resin, just run a full bed exposure print with two layers, or if you're just checking that your light source works, remove the FEP, run it, and then make sure the light is on evenly. There you go, saved you some money and time. The other thing this test reminds me is that even Hollywood stars can be milk toast. This is definitely the most bland test on this entire list. At least the Frozen XP2 has those decorative corners to look at. And you don't need all this extra stuff to be this tall. All of these other flat tests provide similarly ambiguous results without like a million extra layers. End up looking like SimCity print once it's uh, finished. Okay, so the Matter Hackers resin test tile. This test has nothing new to offer that the other tests don't already offer. And maybe that's the reason I hardly see it shared online. Now, initially I saw that they have an article with some instructions and that got me super excited at first, but here's all it says. There are seven hex tiles in the print and each demonstrates a particular geometric condition. For layer cure time, we mainly need to make sure that all of the tiles are successfully printed. Well, it looks like they successfully printed, so perfect exposure, right? No, these are basically the worst results explanations ever. Please, if you're using this test, these instructions are only for the Matter Hackers build resin 
and successfully printed is about as low a standard as you can go for optimizing your exposure via test. So just <laughs> keep that in mind. It also means that this test is not very good for 99% of people. A little science -y, I'll give it a few points, but still this test is straight to jail. To recap on the flat tests, as you can probably tell, these tests are best used as a general range finder if you don't have any idea about what exposure time to start with. And in my opinion, these tests aren't very good at helping with printing miniatures because of how reliant minis are on supports. And these tests don't test for supports at all. There aren't any height tests and definitely no support tests. I wanted to take a moment to thank my patrons over at Patreon for their amazing support. If you've been enjoying the video so far, please consider supporting us on Patreon. It's the best way to make sure we can keep making videos like this one. It gives you access to our patrons only Discord and I have all of my resin profiles over on Patreon as well. Now it's time to move on to what I call the hybrid exposure tests. So these tests do have flat components, but a lot more angled components too. So they're looking to test more than just exposure and dimensional accuracy, like testing how thick pillars can be while printing at an angle. Our first test in this category is the Soraya Tech test model. And this test is barely on the cusp of being considered a flat test to me, but the cube and the arch are what tipped it over. This cube's a common test print on a lot of printers because it's supported and has a lot of different patterns that are hard to print. And very easy to see if they printed well or not. And as you might imagine, the supported part of this test is huge for me because I mostly print miniatures and you'll recognize the triangles from the Photonster XB2 test as well. Besides that, you'll recognize a lot of the same data points as on the other flat tests, except for the arch and the cube. And if you're into dimensional accuracy, the arch height also has a five millimeter clearance too, so you won't just be worrying about XY accuracy, but Z accuracy as well. Next up, we have the 3D Resin Solutions chip test. I call it the pool lounge chair test because it's totally got that vibe for me. This test is really interesting to me because of presentation. It's a lot more interesting to me than say, Simple numbers, squares, holes, and circles. As you can probably tell by now, I prefer full words to numbers and measurements because it's much easier for me to interpret. This test also has stress tests, not just results, like these little thin resin strands. The best part of this test and the next test, the Starship tests, are the absolutely amazing and easy to understand test result explanations. They include all of the detailed dimensional accuracy for the nerdy number folks, as well as the simple why and what explanations for the people like me to understand how many of these little thin thingies I should expect to get on my test, among other things. Now the Starship test is an improved version of the chip test that is bigger, has more stress tests, and simply looks cooler. Gives me very Raiden vibes. I really like the angled pillars because these mimic pre-supported pillars at an angle. They don't hold anything, but seeing how thick and how strong they are is something that's really valuable if you're trying to lock it in. It won't get you exact data, but it's nice to understand conceptually either way. Now between the two of these, I'd absolutely print the Starship test. They're right, it does look really cool. And again, 10 out of 10 to the 3D Resin Solutions team for such an awesome instructional guide. This is definitely one of my favorites on this list. Now our final category of exposure tests are tall tests, which are obviously taller tests. These are generally easier to interpret. They take significantly longer, some even taking over an hour, but these tend to be much better at testing for real life print scenarios because they consider things like supports. We're gonna begin with the cones of calibration by Table Flip Foundry. Full disclosure, Table Flip Foundry has done work with us in the past. They did our pre-supports for our last Kickstarter, Uncharted Lands, but this test is completely separate from that and is something they've shared openly with the community. Now. This is a relatively new test and it's really meant for folks printing miniatures and anything that uses supports. And what this test does is it tells you the optimal exposure time where your pre-support should still print. The results are really easy to read too. On the success side, you want the success cone on the right to be completely formed, while on the failure side, you want there to be as little pillars formed as possible. And if you have one side full and the other side empty, it's about as perfect as you can get it. And that's your exposure number. If you still have some pillars forming on the top of the failure side, you're still really close. I love this test because it's super clear, super easy to read and understand. It might take a bit to wrap your head around it, but there are clear instructions to make it really easy for you to read and it'll click for you pretty quickly once you start running the test for yourself. At least it did for me. I know there's some kinks like this test not working as well with room settings, but I also know they're actively working on this test and so it's going to get new versions released as they continue to get feedback from the community. 
which they do via their Discord server, which I think is really cool. Now, if you're printing miniatures or using anything that uses supports, this test is a must have, in my opinion. Keep in mind, this test is meant for pre-supported miniatures that often use pretty fine supports, like 30 micron tip diameter. So if you're doing your own supports and using really thick supports, it likely won't make much of a difference for you. All right, on to the Amerilabs town. This is another super popular test, definitely prettier. According to them, it's made to keep or give as a present to a friend. I'm not sure about giving it to a friend, but it is much nicer to look at than many of the other exposure tests on this list. What I love the most about this test is again, the detailed test information they provide via a guide. A lot of it's probably too detailed for a casual user like me. It talks about adjusting things like pigment concentration, viscosity, resin polymerization. But what I don't love about this test is an issue we had with earlier tests. The results are just hard to read. The calibrations rely on measurements of things like openings and again, microscopic differences. It's kind of a pain to do at the end of the day. If you wanna go further in depth and focus on things like resin quality and dimensional accuracy, this test would be the right test for you, I think. And their calibration document will show you exactly how to use it for said purpose. Now this next test, the Slicer Supports Pull Test Geometry, as it's titled on Thingiverse, is another test meant for pre-supported miniatures. If you set it up properly, you can see for yourself what level of pre-support your own machine can take and the size of support that will successfully hold this top piece here. It ends up looking like a tensegrity piece to me, which is kind of cool. Uh, for its self-described purpose, this works well, but what I don't like about this is that it requires manual work to go in. And I know that sounds lazy of me, but hear me out. It is lazy of me, <laughs> and how can you blame me when we have so many other tests that are just plug and print? You can use the pre-generated ones, which I did, but this is the only one that printed for me. And I know the settings I use for this are dialed in well. So for me, uh, the test didn't really work very well. If you like to do your own testing, then this does save you some work uh, if you want to kind of do everything yourself. Now, I know that was a lot of tests. It was literally everyone I could find out there, even after asking Facebook, Twitter, Discord, but I think it's important to run these and try them all out so that we can find the best solutions for our community that help us get the best results possible. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like this video, to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one, and I'll see you in the next one. Happy printing and happy gaming.